Hello everyone, Dark of All Trades here. In an attempt to skip the long preamble I have been doing, I am just going to jump right to this video. This one is by a channel called Credo House and is titled The Absurdity of Atheism in 3 Minutes. These videos that try to answer a complex proposition in 3 minutes tend to miss a lot of things. But I want to be fair, so let's give this guy a shot. I'm going to show you how atheism is completely illogical in 3 minutes. No, I didn't mean three minutes from now. I meant, like, I'm going to do it within the time frame of three minutes. Everyone must answer the question, why is there something rather than nothing? No, we don't. Why do you think that everyone is required to answer this question? Who is kidnapping these fine people who are just trying to go about their day in order to force them to answer a question that really has no impact on their everyday lives? The reason why something exists rarely matters to the everyday person. There are virtually no circumstances where I must answer this question. When it comes to any debate or response that I've taken part in, we grant that something exists. There are things extant. If you don't want to grant this, then we're not going to have a discussion. I abhor the hard solipsism argument. It doesn't provide anything meaningful that we could have a conversation on. I grant cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, and I also recognize that other people exist, so if there is a conversation or interaction going on, I assume the other person exists, based on independently verified evidence. In this case, there is a YouTube video that I am reasonably certain I didn't make. It's been called the most basic philosophical question that can possibly be asked. There are only six answers that have been given throughout time. I'm going to show you how five of these are logically absurd. No, I wasn't being mean. I meant, I meant logically absurd from a logical standpoint. I was just, not from just a, you know, I'm cutting you down standpoint. Who are you talking to? It looks like you're in a dark room with one light on you and a few very dim candles. Is someone in the room with you just sitting in the darkness forcing you to make this video? Do you need help? Blink three times if you need me to call for help. If you can come up with something other than this, let me know, but you're not going to be able to. Why? Why even say this at all? If you've already determined that no one is able to do something, why ask them to do it for you? If you can eat the sun, let me know, but you aren't going to be able to. What is the point of expressing this at all? At absolute best, you're wasting time. Even if you meant to just fill space, this comes off as super arrogant and conceited. Like you're trying to tell us that you know everything about this and no one could possibly know something you don't. The first one is, there is not anything. All is an illusion. If all was an illusion, where did the illusion come from? Where did the illusion come from? An illusion in this context means a thing that is or is likely to be wrongly perceived or interpreted by the senses. If there is an illusion, then we presuppose that there must be something in reality that is perception or the ability to interpret. Illusions aren't really things in and of themselves. Illusions come from our minds getting something wrong. This is why magicians are so much fun. Your mind determines something is real and then the magician shows you something that goes against that. Your initial perception of reality and your perception after the illusion is performed clash, leaving you in awe and wonder. The question put forth is nonsensical. If your brain mistakes something in reality, where did that actual thing that is the mistake come from in reality? It doesn't actually exist. So, while I don't think this first point is sound, it is valid if you think about it for more than just a moment, so you haven't necessarily ruled it out. And if it came from another illusion, where did that illusion come from? Then you have infinite regress of illusions. Even if I grant the idea that illusions come from something, so what? I don't have a problem with an infinite regress. Why do you? Can you demonstrate that an infinite regress is impossible? I bet you'd win some kind of prestigious award if you could, because you would be the first person to do so. You fail on two accounts. The second is that the universe is self-created. The universe would have to predate itself in order to create itself. And where would this predated universe come from? Not necessarily. I do not have the expertise on this, so I'll point you to ideas like causaloid framework, indefinite causality, and retrocausality. I'm guessing this guy has not studied general relativity or quantum mechanics in any meaningful way. Again, this is a very complicated topic that if there's interest, I can dive into a bit more in the future, but it is outside my area of expertise. So it is technically possible for the universe to have created itself. The effect came before the cause. I don't think I believe it actually happened, but it is logically possible in quantum mechanics. The next one is that the universe is created by chance. But chance doesn't really exist. It has no being in and of itself. Well, I'll give you the second part. Chance does not have a being in and of itself. 
Do you know why? This is because chance is an abstract noun. Abstract concepts don't have a physical being. They exist in our minds only. They are generalized things formulated by extracting common qualities from specific examples. For example, if I have four corgis, the corgis themselves exist, but the number four itself does not. We have a symbol to represent the number, but taken in a vacuum, it is meaningless. We need four of something. If you want an example of chance, I can show you dice rolls and how they work. I can flip a coin and we can determine the chance it will land on heads. We know chance exists as a label we put on the possibility that something will happen or the occurrence and development of events in the absence of any obvious design. Show me chance. Introduce me to chance. I'd like to meet him. File this under stupid things people have said. Show me four. Introduce me to four. I'd like to meet him. Do you see how silly that sounds? You don't show, introduce, or meet abstract things, just like you can't introduce me to any specific emotion like love or apathy. You can't meet chance. Chance is just a term we use to describe mathematical probabilities. It would be like saying fast created the universe or pretty created the universe. None of these have any being in themselves, therefore they can't create anything. So you do get it. Though it isn't just this, it is commonly used to mean this. It doesn't exist as a physical thing, but neither does your concept of God. The next is nothing created the universe. But this fails for the same reason chance fails. Nothing has no being. It is nothing. I've covered this a few times now, and the response I'll give is the same as I would give to the cosmological argument. In physics, nothing is not necessarily no thing. In fact, nothing in the way you are using it may even be a nonsensical term when referring to existence. But even if I were to grant your meaning, there are so many issues with it. Nothing cannot be. Can you demonstrate your claim that nothing cannot create something? Have you ever investigated nothing? Is nothing stable? Do you have any examples of nothing we could investigate? Can you show me nothing? I could take your route here and say, if you can come up with a demonstration of nothing, let me know, but you're not going to be able to. Nothing can't create something. There's a good Latin phrase for this. Ex nihilo, nihil fit. Out of nothing, nothing comes. If your arguments are nothing, what does that say about you? Next is that the universe has existed for all eternity. The absurdities here are incredible. You cannot have the past go back an infinite amount of time. The absurdities of your statement are incredible. Going back to what I asked before, how did you determine that an infinite regression is impossible? Right now you're just asserting that it is impossible with no backing evidence. How did you determine that time always operated exactly the same as it does now? We know we can't investigate beyond the Planck time, so how did you determine what happened before then? You were just guessing, or more likely, you're just regurgitating someone else's blatant unsupported guess. But let me grant this for now. If we are in the present moment, which we are, then there has to have been a beginning. Philosophy and science both tell us there has to be a beginning. If time went back for all eternity, an infinite amount, then we would never get to the pr present moment. We would always have to pass an infinite amount of moments to get here. That would be impossible. It would be like saying, how long does it take to jump out of an infinitely deep hole? You can't. It's absurd. You would have to have a starting point to begin from, otherwise you would never get out of the hole. Our local presentation of time began at the Big Bang. We have a beginning of time as we understand it. However, existence is necessarily temporal. There is no existence without time. Things cannot exist for no time. Verbs or actions, by definition, require time. No time, no verb. If this is going where I think it is, I'll touch more on this a bit later. Finally, we have an eternal, self-existent God created the universe. There it is. Was anyone really surprised that this is where he ended up? I was so surprised. Were you surprised? I was surprised. <laughs> That's the only option. And you can't tell me it fails due to the infinite regress principle. God is outside of time, so he is not subject to that. How did you determine that this is the only option? Even if I grant that the other five cannot be true, which I very much don't, this doesn't mean that your option must be by default. This is an example of either the argument from ignorance, I don't know any other option, so it must be this one, or this is a fallacy I haven't covered before called the process of elimination fallacy, or the Sherlock Holmes fallacy, or as some may call it, Doyle's fallacy. How did you determine that you have eliminated every other possible option? 
Even granting that you have eliminated every other known option, you haven't demonstrated your claim to be correct. So Dark, I hear you ask, why is this answer wrong? Let me go in order of the statement, starting with eternal. This word alone negates the initial question. If God exists, then by definition, it is something. If God exists eternally, then he always existed. Therefore, something has always existed. Now I cheated and jumped ahead just to see what he says, and he actually makes almost this exact argument for me. So even if I granted your outside of time, therefore avoids infinite regression argument, we're talking about existence as an idea separate from time in this case, which is not possible as I stated before. Existence is necessarily temporal, but even granting it by your own words, something always existed. God is either something or nothing, right? God can't be nothing because out of nothing, nothing comes. Therefore, God must be something. Therefore, something always existed. Therefore, nothing could not have existed. This is basically your last point just kicked down the road a half step. Something always existed. Why can't the universe have always existed if you accept your God has always existed? Self-existent means that it exists independent of any cause. Can you demonstrate that this is even possible? But sure, if I were to grant the possibility of this, then why can we not apply it to the universe? Why can't the universe exist independently of a cause? To say that your God is self-existent is a classic example of special pleading. You're making a blatant assertion that your God does not have to follow the rules that literally everything else does without justification. Furthermore, how did you determine that your God is outside of time and therefore not subject to infinite regression? If your God avoids an infinite regression because it's outside of time, then why couldn't your God have a cause that didn't create the universe? Why couldn't there be an infinite regression of gods if the problem doesn't apply? Couldn't a non-self-existent God have created the universe? Then, if all of that was not enough to dismiss your postulation, all we would have to do is ask what your God being made the universe out of. I asked you, are you telling me it's impossible, no matter what, for something to come from nothing? And you said, you said yes, but then you said God created the universe out of, what was it again? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing. I'm trying to How did God make the universe? He can't make it out of nothing, as you said yourself, so that means he must have made it out of something that was already here. What extant material did your God being used to make the universe? But enough of your failures of your terrible postulation. Let's see your argument. The fact is, if something exists, there is a God. Something does exist, therefore there is a God. Here's the argument laid out in a syllogism so we can properly examine it. It seems to be a hybrid form of the ontological and the argument from contingency, both of which are terrible, and this is somehow worse. Premise 1. If something exists, there is a god. How did you determine this? It isn't one of the five, therefore it is the sixth because no one can think of anything else it could be? This is the argument from elimination. I only know six things it could be, and it isn't the first five I know, therefore it must be the sixth, irrespective of the sixth argument. This premise is on the same grounds as if I say, if something exists, then there is no God. It is simply a claim that needs to be demonstrated, not just asserted. So I reject premise one. Premise two, something does exist. No problem with this one. In order to investigate something, something has to exist to be investigated and something needs to exist to be the investigator. I accept premise two. Conclusion, therefore God exists. While this is a valid argument, it is not a sound argument. I reject premise one, therefore I cannot accept the conclusion. Here's a possibility not on this list. Something that wasn't God created the universe. Maybe it was an unintelligent cause. Maybe it was the natural byproduct of a non-intelligent being. Maybe this universe came from a different universe. Maybe it was inevitable. I know I don't have to have an answer for why there is something rather than nothing, but here is my take. Something is the default state. Existence is the base on which attributes are applied. This would technically fall into the something always existed category, but this guy already accepts that but uses word games and undemonstrated assertions to try to get out of it. That's all for his video. In all of this, he didn't address atheism at all. He just hand waved away five propositions for why the universe exists and then just asserted a sixth without backing it up at all. He completely ignored someone answering, I don't know. If we say that we don't know why something exists rather than nothing, then that has no bearing on atheism or theism. I didn't hear him even say the word atheism at all, did you? That's it for this one. What do you think? You don't have to answer, but why do you think there is something rather than nothing? 
Do you agree with me that existence is the default state? Leave a comment below and share your thoughts. I love reading about what you think about these things. As always, hit the like button, unless it's just an illusion, but where did it come from? It is there, right? You could always prove to this guy that the cause of the universe is actually my channel by hitting the subscribe button. My Patreon is up and running at patreon.com backslash darkofalltrades. Become a Patreon at any level would prove that your effect predates the cause that is my channel. And as always, keep learning.